What's up everybody? This is Theo from Theo's Pets and this is our new hatchling from uh, Persephone and Kronos, our green pair we got going on. So, well, today's video was going to be a little more happy and upbeat. It was going to be about good news, but not so much now. So let's watch the intro and let's talk, shall we? So today I want to talk about metabolic bone disease. So primarily in crested geckos. Um, so well, let's just get this out of the way. For starters, this is Quasimodo. So as you can see from some of the other crested gecko videos, which I'll link a card to one here, we do not look normal. Now, Quasimodo here, I got from a Craigslist ad. Uh, I traded for a 65 gallon tank. Um, from the pictures that were sent, it didn't look anywhere near this bad. Honestly, I thought it was a little underweight, like I could start to see the hips, but it was just the camera angles. Once I got them, you can tell that we are stunted. Our spine is completely warped. Our tail bows completely in. Um, so, what this is, is metabolic bone disease. What metabolic bone disease is, it's a condition that really occurs when vitamins, minerals, and nutrients making up the reptile's bones are lacking or imbalanced. Um, and so the body will begin to pull some of these nutrients from the bones to compensate, uh, as well as the bones become so weak from calcium deficiency that the muscles become stronger than the bones, causing them to warp and twist and distort and disfigure like you're seeing there. Um, unfortunately, this is a decently common condition in most reptiles. Uh, you actually see it a lot in bearded dragons and a lot of things that need UVB light and UVA light uh, specifically because uh, people, those bulbs can get kind of expensive, not really, but decently, um, and people just don't want to change them. So this can occur a lot in beardeds, but specifically today I want to talk about it in crested geckos because it happens for a completely different reason. Um, in crested geckos, I'm going to start this off with how we keep crested geckos. So, not that there's anything wrong with it, but they don't have the UVB and UVA light that we're talking about. Well, some of them do, um, and I actually have one of my breeding females and one growing under a UVB and a UVA light. Um, but that is for my own personal data collection on if it makes a difference having them under the UVB and UVA as opposed to not, like I'm keeping most of the other rest of the room here. Um, so if anybody else has any data on that or is interested in conversating about that, please let me know below or get to me privately. Um, however, the, without the UVB and the UVA, it doesn't promote as much uh, buildup of that vitamin D3 in the crested geckos. Um, and so they really need to compensate that with diet. So the diet should really be consisting of a complete diet, not baby food, which for some reason I stumble across a lot online that people say baby food is something to feed these things, um, as well as homemade fruits, fruit blends, whatever. Um, now I do do a homemade fruit blend of bananas and blueberries, raw honey, that kind of stuff as a treat once every month to a few months for my geckos, but that is not something they should be eating every day. They should be eating balanced diets. Um, and you can find those quite readily available. Zoomed, after actually, I believe Altitude Exotics made a video about Zoomed's bad quality food and then it changed to good quality food. And I actually feed the Zoomed watermelon um, as part of my rotation in the room, Pangea apricot insects. Um, I use a lot of Pangea growth and breeding. I really use that as a big staple for the majority of my room, as well as the Rapeshi grub and bugs or grubbing figs. Um, I'll post a little video clip of all my foods and stuff and what I'm talking about here at the end. I didn't bring them in here with me like I should have. I guess I should have prepared a little better. Uh, but 
The complete diets are essential. Um, you have to pay attention to that too though because there are treat diets on the market, which I also feed my geckos every once in a while. Um, they really seem to enjoy the banana cream pie from Pangea, but that is not a complete diet. That is a treat food. So that is not something that should be fed to them every feeding. They really should be eating a complete diet all the way around the majority of the time. Um, and that's gonna give them the calcium, the D3 they need, the other vitamins and minerals they need to compensate and make all uh, the stuff they need for this basically not to happen just the easiest way to explain it is they get all the vitamins and minerals so their body doesn't have to take it from their spine and warp due to muscle dystrophy but that's a whole nother ball game uh so on with the diet you should also be feeding insects crickets dubia roaches that kind of thing um calcium dusted now a good bit of my crested especially the rescued ones actually won't take insects um, and so there's ways to compensate for that as well which actually boils back down to something I just mentioned the Pangea growth and breeding um, I get the insect one and then I use Rapeshi grub and bugs so these actually have ground up uh, like black beetles and all sorts of other insects that you don't normally just readily find available uh, for feeding in there like some larvas and stuff and honestly everybody's putting on good weight everybody eats well. our calcium sacks are also really really nice which is what I want to talk about now <coughs> um, and so well I guess that's actually gonna more so geared us into the symptoms of MBD the metabolic bone disease and what you should be looking out for so basically really really early signs are gonna be the gecko shaking its head um, a slightly crooked tail which you can definitely tell is going on there overall inability to stick and muscle weakness so they're not quite as sticky uh, to the glass surfaces the plastic your shirt even um, and then shaking when walking or moving or you're picking them up so um, they are getting a little bit better uh, but we're not actually we're really not that shaky um, so I mean I'm not gonna complain I can't really show you that obviously that's a good thing but uh, because when we first got them on I was really worried that they were so distorted it was painful for them to be existing to be honest with you but as you can tell here we move around quite well we can jump um, and we're super sweet and docile so um, I'm building a special needs tank but we're gonna do a whole other video on that later so um, now the progressed symptoms of the MBD which we're seeing here uh, you can get bonus swollen legs arched spine uh, bumps along the legs spine and tail which you can kind of see I don't know if I can catch it on the video but where you can see where the back spine droops straight down there's a lump right here on this hip bone uh, lack of appetite and that's gonna go along with something called rubber jaw which is basically a bilateral uh, weakening of the lower jaw here on both sides causing uh, it to be very weak and sometimes even hang open and they can't even close their mouth it's super sad to see um as well as gray or black calcium sex now uh i don't want to harass this guy to show the calcium sex so what i'm going to do is while i'm talking about those i'm going to post a online clip here of me showing the google searches of healthy and unhealthy calcium sex um, but basically this is a good way to check the overall health of your gecko and also uh, just promote general well-being of them. So basically, most geckos in general, if you coax them to open their mouth, um, you're going to see, as you'll see in the clip I have going here, these two round white balls pretty much in the back of their mouth, and those are filled with calcium. And so that is good calcium levels within the gecko. Um, as you'll see on the other ones that I'm pointing out, when they turn gray, black, they're weirdly shaped or completely sunken in, that's obviously not enough calcium. Uh, in said gecko and so <laughs> that's something easy to monitor and a good way to check on the health and the calcium of your gecko in general and that's really specifically important um, especially when you start getting into breeding and females because laying females have to produce so much calcium on the eggs themselves that uh, this MBD is super prevalent with them especially around the springtime when they start to lay so you have to be really really on top of this especially with your females in particular um, during the land time, sorry. He, uh, I thought he was about to fall off my hand there. But Quasimodo 
is a good boy. Um, and unfortunately, the last symptom of this MBD, uh, if none of these things are addressed, is death. It's a fatal condition. So, I mean, that's just overall sad. And what's really sad about it is it's easily detectable early on as well as easily fixed when detected, especially if it's before it gets to this point. Uh, and so it just kind of, it kind of makes me a little angry. I got to watch what I say for YouTube standard reasons. Um, but it kind of really just ticks me off a little bit that, you know, a quick Google search, literally, you could read one paragraph from a Google search of why is my crested gecko spine twisted and figure out that MBD is the problem. You're obviously not fitting this thing right because that's where MBD comes from in crested geckos. And there you go. You just adjust what you're doing from there. And that should be common practice with any reptile as soon as anything starts to go on. As well as, why did it not go to a vet? Have you ever seen a crested gecko? Does that look right or normal to you? So your vet could very well have told you what was happening and what was going on and what to do to fix it. Because it's literally as easy as fixing its diet to not have this happen to your animals and that's just sad in itself and this when I met up with him before I realized how bad it was he was bragging about the leopard geckos they just got two tortoises they have bearded dragons and so me and him got into a little bit of an argument over text message about uh, whether or not everything else in the house was properly taken care of because I mean look at look at that So, I'll grab some clips of that food and stuff for you. Uh, this was not the video I was going to make this week, but this is the video that we're getting this week. So, thank you for listening to me rant. Um, if anybody has anything to say or wants to show off their, their other rescue geckos, metabolic bone disease, to help promote this issue, let me know down below. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Okay, real quick, while we have your attention, say hi, Franklin. Um, if you guys like these somewhat informative videos and would like me to dive a little bit further into that and actually, you know, do structured videos, I can lay out the information I'm talking about on screen uh, and do actual informational videos, I'm down for that. Just let me know down below if that's something you guys would be interested in. Um, I know I'm a little galaxy brained with it, uh, jumping back and forth. I mean, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that I'm honestly a little mad about how this gecko was treated and portrayed to me. but. Regardless, uh, if y'all are interested in more structured, formatted, informational videos from us here at Theo's Pets, please let me know because that is definitely something I'm interested in doing, so appreciate you. Bye, Franklin. Bye, Franklin. All right. So, for starters, let's look at the Zoom It. Um, the watermelon that I normally use, I'm actually out of because they love it. Uh, but I do have... No, this is the watermelon, not the tropical fruit. Never mind. I'm all the tropical fruit. But we got zoom in watermelon now. Once again, this is premium blended gecko formula. Now this does not say complete diet, and that is relevant. So that's gonna go the same thing with uh, this one here, which is probably the favorite food in the room. Um, I have actually my white brindle gorges themselves on this to the point I have to be careful how much I give them. Uh, but this is the banana and papaya fruit mix uh, and the banana cream pie, but I'm out of that one. But these two here are absolutely by far blow out of the water gecko favorites. If you have a problem eater, you can entice them to eat with this. Notice again, this does not say complete gecko diet. So let's move on. This one here is the fig and insects. Uh, now, this one is another room favorite. Uh, this one, my Brenda will also gorge itself on. Uh, the breeding females love this. The babies, my hatchling hatchlings, also all tend to gravitate towards this. Uh, the difference with this, though, is notice it, it says, notice it says, nutritious, complete diet. So that means that this is balanced and formulated for the gecko for phosphorus for calcium, for vitamin D3, for all of these things it needs to promote healthy growth, breeding, and just live a long and healthy life. Uh, and those balances are important. Um, so brands are also kind of important because not every Crested Gecko food on the market that says complete diet is actually gonna be good for your gecko. If you look at 
percentages of what put in there, you'll notice a difference in, in some of them. But when you get into the higher uh, caliber brands and most recognized foods and researchers here in the in the hobby, these tend to be about on par where everybody lands. So, complete nutritious diet. These two here, uh, we were talking about the if you're if you're crested, won't eat bugs. Uh, you don't like to feed bugs for some reason. Some people are kind of squeamish about feeding that. I'm, I mean, I guess that's technically a lot of feeding. Um, but, so here, now this one, I'll show you this one first. We're going to go with Rapeshi Grubs and Fruit. Uh, this, the room tends to eat really well. The only thing I have noticed with this compared to the Pangea is it goes bad faster. Um, and if you let it sit too long in the fridge, like, because I have multiple bottles that I use that are all labeled and stuff. And, like, I put one up on, beside the milk, uh, when I went to get a different bottle, it got pushed back. Uh, this molds a lot quicker than the Pangea stuff. Uh, but, it doesn't matter as long as you, you shouldn't be feeding them old food anyway, obviously. But, complete gecko diet, and this has bugs to compensate for if they're scared of crickets, dubias, that kind of stuff. Um, this one here also has insects in it. Uh, well, you can get it with or without insects, I do believe, but I always get it with the insects. Now, this is the biggest staple for the entire room. And this is Pangea Growth and Breeding with Insects, Nutritious Complete Diet. Uh, this stacks on healthy weight, and it does it pretty quickly. They tend to enjoy it, um, I mean, just realistically. Like, you can, I can tell the difference between when it's Pangea Growth and, and Breeding, week and a half of feeding in rotation than with the rest of them from literally just the heft on some of these lizards. Uh, this is by far the food that I recommend that you should be having your adults, your babies, your juveniles, everybody on. Um, but they do burn out so you have to you have to rotate obviously as you saw my little my little pile here and I'm gonna be ordering some more here soon. But that's just giving you a little bit more info on how to avoid everything this video was about here today guys um, because unfortunately Quasimodo over here that the damage is permanent we can get them healthy again we can get them where the body's not continuing to dis disfigure itself and contort like that but it's never gonna undo that damage that's already done uh, so we're gonna work on getting them a, a multi-level like handicap accessible tank going we'll, we'll update on Quasi here but food's important guys Really important. Have a great day.